few months ago, I released a video where I talked about things that you should know before you major in computer science. And I recently rewatched that video, and I realized that even though all the points in that video still stand, there were definitely a few things that I should have talked about in that video that I left out just for the sake of keeping it short. So I decided I would use today's video to talk a little bit more about the topic, call it a part two video if you will. So if you haven't already watched the original, I will link it for you guys. Also, I know I haven't been making too many computer science videos recently, but that should be changing in the next couple weeks. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you see those videos as soon as they come out. And on top of that, if you have any ideas or questions about computer science, make sure you leave those down in the comments below and I'll either answer your question or try to make a video about it in the coming weeks. All right, so this first point is for anyone who's coming into college with very little or no coding experience and you're worried that because you didn't start coding when you were five years old that you have, metaphorically speaking, missed the boat. Personally, for full transparency, I did start coding in my sophomore year of high school, so I did actually have a few years of experience before I went to college. But in my very first college class, CS 1301, I remember a whole bunch of people in the class literally had no coding experience. Here's the thing. If you're willing to put in the time and the effort to actually learn computer science when you're in college, you're definitely going to be able to catch up to, if not surpass, all the other people who came in with coding experience who are resting on their laurels and just focused on enjoying the college experience instead of actually putting in the hard work to really get the most out of their education. Obviously, this isn't to say that coming in with coding experience is a bad thing because that literally makes no sense but just realize that it really does not matter if you've never coded before heading into college. The second point I want to talk about is one that I've heard so many times, and I can understand that because I once was saying it myself, and it's that you don't think you're wired to be a computer science major because things aren't clicking. Now, this isn't going to be a perfect analogy, but for the purposes of this video, we're gonna roll with it. Let's say you decided you wanted to start learning German. Great. So, a month in, you decide you're going to take a test and see how well you're doing, and surprise, you're not quite fluent in German yet. Obviously, this was probably to be expected. So why wouldn't you expect the same exact result when you start coding? The reality is when you first start coding, it's the same as learning another language. There's going to be a learning curve and it's going to be really challenging in the beginning. Whenever I talk to people, I always refer to this as getting over the hump. The truth is I actually tried coding several times before I did it as a sophomore in high school and I always gave up. But once I was a sophomore in high school, I actually put a lot of time and effort into it. And all of a sudden, I finally got over the hump and things started making sense. If you're new to coding and you've been struggling and you think, maybe I'm just not wired that way, give it a few months of actually really trying, putting in the time and the effort, and I'm sure you'll be very frustrated because that's totally normal. But once you get over that hump, things will make so much more sense and the rest of your coding journey will be so much easier. This is another point that I hear about all the time and I read so many variations of this online. And it's that if you haven't gotten an internship at your big dream company, that you're behind. First off, despite what you might be reading on certain social media sites, this really is not the case for most people. Especially in a situation like this, it's important to keep in mind that what you see on social media is really just a best of compilation and it's not representative of everyday normal life. Now, social media is a topic in itself and I'm not gonna get into that, but just keep that in mind. The second thing is don't build up the big dream internships too much in your mind. The reality is there's a lot of big companies that you might have an awful internship experience at, and there's a lot of smaller, lesser known companies that you can have amazing internship experiences at. And sure, it might not look exactly the same on your resume whether you worked at company A or company B, especially if company A is really well reputed. But the truth of the matter is, the three months of experience that you get doing that internship is going to be hugely important either way. So don't worry about where other people say they're working, just focus on yourself. Try to find the best opportunities for yourself and do the best that you can do, get that valuable experience, and then maybe someday you'll be able to move up to your dream company. But first, you've gotta earn your stripes. The next point, which people who haven't gone to college yet might not know about, is don't worry about the people who say they have experience with 20 different languages and 10 different technologies on their resume. Just don't worry about that. First off, in most cases, those people generally don't actually have experience with all those different languages. Maybe they wrote a program or two in one of those languages, so they decided to toss it on the resume, but they're not actually experts or even well-versed in most of those things. And second, for the handful of people who actually do know all those languages and do know all those technologies, that's great, that's really good for them, but just realize that that does not need to be you. You can be successful in the industry and get a job without knowing 20 different languages and 10 different technologies. And the reality is for computer science, and I'm sure this goes for a number of other disciplines as well, depth is better than breadth. What I mean by this is it's better to be an expert in one or a couple different things than to just know the basics of a bunch of different things. As a senior in college, there's a number of different fields that I've never been exposed to and I may never work with in my entire career, and that's totally normal. Figure out what you're interested in and then dig into that, but trust me, you don't need to be an expert on everything 
as a computer scientist. All right, and on a related note to the last point, especially depending on your school, not every computer science graduate is going to be coming out with the same knowledge. At Georgia Tech, we have something called threads, which is essentially just specializations. There's eight of them, and we get to choose which two we want to focus on. That lets us dive into the things that we're really interested in and never even study other things that we don't care about. Now, of course, everyone still needs a foundation. You're not going to be able to get out of your prerequisite courses like data structures and algorithms. And even if you could, you really shouldn't get out of those sorts of classes. But the reality is it allows you to think about the things that you really want to go into and specialize in and focus on those things and not take classes on things that you really don't care about. I truly do think this is a great concept and I hope lots of other colleges are doing it, but the one big downside is if your classmates are taking other specializations than you, you're going to feel like you're behind in some areas because you're going to see all the things that they've learned that you haven't learned and think, wow, they know way more than I do. Now, obviously this isn't true. You're going to know way more about your own specialization than they do, but in your head, this is a very easy trap to fall into. So just remember that you should focus on yourself and your own specialization, and you're going to know some things that they won't know, and your classmates will know some things that you won't know. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. It really means a lot to me. And if you haven't already, subscribe for new videos on computer science and leave a comment down below on any ideas or questions you might have. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.